In some cases, a benzene-containing molecule will react with a nucleophile to form some type of product. So let's take a look at the following example that basically deals with such a reaction. Let's suppose we take 1,2-dibromo-4-nitrobenzene and we react it with some type of strong nucleophile. Now, although three potential products can be formed, let's say a student observes that only one of these products is actually formed. Now, we want to ask ourselves, what are the three products that can be formed? Why is one of these products only formed and why? So let's begin by looking at the three potential products that can be formed in this nucleophilic addition of the benzene containing molecule. So let's represent, let's designate our nucleophile with NU, which stands for nucleophile, with our lone pair of electrons. Now we have, we mix our strong nucleophile in the presence of a strong, in the presence of this 1,2-dibromo for nitro benzene molecule. And we basically want to ask ourselves, what are the three products that can be formed in this reaction? So we have product, let's call it product one. We have product, let's call this product two. And we have product three that can be formed. So basically, we have two of these halogens. We have two bromide atoms. Now, let's say that product one is the product where this bromide has been replaced by the nucleophile while this one has not been replaced. So the first product looks something like this. So we basically have our nitro group on the fourth carbon. We have our benzene ring. This halogen, this bromide, has not been replaced, but this has been replaced. Now, the second product that can form is basically the product where this second bromide atom has been replaced by the nucleophile and the first bromide atom is still on that molecule. And the final product that can be formed is these two bromide atoms are both replaced by our nucleophile. So let's call this product product 3. So we have our benzene ring, nitro group, and both of these groups are our nucleophile groups. So product one, product two, and product three. These are the three potential products that can be formed. The question is, which one of these products is formed and which ones do not actually form? Well, we're going to cheat a bit and I'm going to simply tell you that this is the product that is formed while these two are not formed. But knowing the answer isn't as important as knowing why this actually takes place. So if you actually take this reactant and run this reaction, you'll see that this is the one that is formed and these are not formed. So now we have to basically explain why this one is formed and why these two are not formed. And basically to answer this question, we have to examine the intermediates that are formed. So let's begin begin with the intermediate form when our reaction goes this way. So basically, this is the production of one. So we basically have resonance stabilization. So let's suppose that our nucleophile uses these two electrons to basically attack this carbon here. When it attacks this carbon here, it basically displaces this pi bond, which now forms a pi bond here, and that breaks this pi bond and puts the electrons onto this carbon here. So we basically form this molecule here. We have a pi bond here, a pi bond here. We have the nucleophile the bromide, we have the bromide here that will not be replaced and we have our NO2 group. Now we also have the two electrons 
that will end up on this carbon next to our nitrogen containing group and we have a negative charge here now of course we have resonance stabilization so basically these two electrons can go and form a bond here kicking off this one and this will end up on this carbon here so we can have this resonance stabilized form so we have a bond here we have our two electrons here we have a bond here this is our nu this is our br this is our br and this is our no2 and we have a negative charge on this carbon here so let's take a look at the following two resonance stabilized structures so first of all just because we have resonance stabilization that means this will be a stabilizing effect the negative charge will be delocalized among two carbon atoms among this one and this one and that in itself will be a stabilizing effect now the question is how does this resonance structure compare to the resonance structure that is formed in step two for product number two. So let's draw the resonance structures for the second one and see how this one compares. Now the only difference here is that these two electrons now attack this one and not this carbon. So we form our nucleophile basically attaches onto this second carbon here. So this is our NO2 group. Now our nucleophile attaches onto this carbon. This one still contains Now the question is where are our pi bonds? Well basically there's a pi bond here and when we form a pi bond here these two electrons end up on this carbon here. So we have our two electrons right over here. Now when these two electrons end up here that will not change this bond and that will not change this bond here. So we have resin stabilization. So we have our this should have a negative charge so if these electrons basically go on to this forming a pi bond here that will kick off this one putting our two electrons onto this carbon here so let's draw that so we have our two electrons here that creates a negative charge on this carbon we have our bond being formed here and we have the group here as well so we have a bond here as well and finally these two electrons can end up here forming a bond here so we have a third group that is also formed and actually here we're also going to have a third group and I'll finish that group in just a moment after I finish this one so basically we have this attacking this this placing this placing it onto this carbon here so uh, we have a negative charge on this carbon so we have our two electrons here this is our NO2 group this is our BR group we have a bond here a bond is formed here and we have our NU the nucleophile and the BR so and as I said earlier there's actually a third group that is formed here as well so basically if we look at this diagram here what can also happen is these two electrons can actually go on to this uh, between these two carbons here displacing this pi bond placing it onto this carbon so the third resonance structure that can basically form is the two uh, electrons on the carbon that is attached to that single bromide and here we have the nucleophile we have our um, bond here, we have bond here and NO2. Okay, so in both cases, we have three resonance stabilized structures.
The question is, what exactly is the difference between these two sets and which one is more stable? Well, let's take a look at product one. Because product one is formed, that might imply that this is in fact more stable, and in fact it is. The answer lies on this nitrogen here, this carbon that contains the nitrogen group. So basically, nitrogen is more electronegative than carbon. So that means nitrogen will pull away electrons more strongly than carbon will. And so when this carbon bears the negative charge, this electronegative nitrogen will pull away some of that electron density from this carbon. And by pulling away some of that electric charge, it stabilizes this entire system. So because the nitrogen is right next to the carbon that contains a negative charge, that stabilizes this intermediate. But in this case, we do not have that stabilizing effect. In this case, we basically have none of our carbons containing the electric charge that are found close or right next to that nitrogen atom. So this carbon, this carbon, and this carbon, they don't have that negative charge. So they cannot interact with this nitrogen atom. Now we can visualize this even better by actually drawing out this NO2 group. So let's do it right over here. So let's redraw this particular molecule. So we have our two electrons here. We have our NU. We have our Br. This also contains the Br. We have the two pi bonds here. And our N actually looks something like this. So basically, this N will have a positive charge, this oxygen will have a negative charge, and this will have a negative charge as well. So what can happen also is these two electrons can basically end up on this carbon forming a pi bond between this carbon and this nitrogen. And so another resonance structure exists that basically looks something like this. We have two pi bonds here. We have Nu, Br, Br, and a pi bond a double bond between here so that our nitrogen is now neutral and this oxygen still bears a negative charge. So notice that this is a very stabilizing effect. So actually, not only do we have this effect here, but we have an extra, we have four resonance structures, one, two, three, and four. But here, we only have three, and that's because the two electrons never actually end up on the carbon that is next to this electron withdrawing group. And the same thing can be seen by drawing our mechanism intermediate by looking at this product. So these two are not formed because they don't have this resonance stabilized structure, but this does form because as a result of this, this becomes lower in energy and more stable.